This time on Ozark Garage, we are testing 3D printed bump stops in Moab. This is my 1999 Chevrolet Tracker turned into a buggy. You may have seen it on the channel before. If you want some more detail on this rig, I'll put a link in the upper right so you can check it out. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. The suspension on this truggy consists of Dana 44s from a Jeep J10 with custom three links front and rear and Jeep TJ coil springs. Like a lot of rock crawling rigs, it's set up to be low to the ground, and as a result, it doesn't have a lot of up travel. The current shocks I have it set up with have about 11 inches of travel, three up, eight down. In a previous video, I installed some Monroe gas magnum shocks with a much higher dampening rate to keep from hitting the bump stops, which are just hard polyurethane. The problem with the shocks I installed is they are designed for a three quarter ton Ford truck, which has a weight rating of almost 9,000 pounds. Needless to say, the ride was very, very harsh on the trail, but I didn't really hit the bump stops anymore. Another upside of the stiffer shock was the road handling improved because I don't have sway bars on the front or the rear of this rig. So I set about looking for a long travel shock that was adjustable, my thought being I could set it soft for the trails and then harder for on the roads. So I came across these Rancho RS9000 series shocks. As far as adjustable shocks go, they're not very expensive and they've got nine adjustment settings from soft to hard. The dimensionally, they're almost identical to the Monroe shocks I have been running, but these had a half inch sleeve in the bushings instead of a five eighths, which I needed for the Truggy. So I had to make a couple tools to press out the old sleeves and press in new sleeves, but otherwise they should fit just fine. Just to give you an idea of the adjustment range of these shocks, on the lowest setting, they take about, call it 30 pounds to fully compress, and then on the highest settings, they take over 60 pounds to fully compress. So that's a pretty good range in there. The Monroe shocks I was running, for instance, those take around 50 pounds to fully compress. So these can go as stiff, if not stiffer than the Monroe shocks I was running, but they can also go a lot softer. With softer shocks on the trail, that means I'll be hitting the bump stops even more. So I started looking for a softer, more progressive bump stop, and there's a handful of performance bump stops out there available on the market, but the ones that really caught my eye were these from Perry Parts. I'm a big fan of 3D printing. I use it at work, I use it at home, and it's great for rapid prototyping and checking the fitment of parts, but I get really excited when you have a fully functional 3D printed part, and especially if being 3D printed enhances the performance of the part, which is exactly the case with these. The way these are printed is they are very solid at the bottom. At the top, it's almost hollow, printed like a foam with infill, and then it gets more and more solid as it comes down. What that gives you is a progressive rate. So as this impacts, it goes from soft to harder to harder and gives you a dampening effect, not just a hard stop like the solid polyurethane bump stops I have right now. Perry Parts offers these bump stops for a variety of applications. You can check out their website and see. But by changing a combination of the external dimensions of the part and the internal density, they can fine tune it for the application without actually having to change the material. Needless to say, my Truggy is not a factory vehicle, so I reached out to Patrick from Perry Parts to see if he had an application that would fit the bill. After providing him some information about the space constraints and the sprung weight of the vehicle, Patrick recommended these, which are designed for a Chevy Colorado. Full disclosure, Perry Parts did provide me two sets of these bump stops so I could review them for you guys today. These bump stops have a rate of about 2,200 pounds per inch, meaning 2,200 pounds of force will compress them one inch. Realistically, in my application, they'll probably only compress about three quarters of an inch but that creates another issue. So currently I have about four inches of up travel between the axle and the frame before I have metal to metal contact. I have the bump stop currently set. This is a hard polyurethane bump stop set so that the axle will hit before it hits the frame with a gap of about one inch. Now this is a hard bump stop that really doesn't compress. The new Perry Parts bump stops though, those will compress about three quarters of an inch. With three quarters of an inch of compression, my axle will only clear the frame by about a quarter inch which if it compresses any more or anything else flexes, it could actually hit. So I could put a spacer on the axle or the bump stop itself to give it more standoff from the frame, but that means I'd hit the bump stop even sooner, which I really don't want to do, and I don't want to limit the up travel any more than I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the entire coil mount and bump stop down on the frame. So moving them down on the frame is going to move the frame up one inch. It'll actually lift the entire vehicle, uh, which is something I was trying to avoid doing, but all things considered, it's the best compromise. So then I'll have five inches of gap between the frame and the axle, and then the Perry Parts bump stop will compress three quarters of an inch, 
giving me an inch and a quarter between the axle and the frame, which is a lot better setup. So as I said before, we're gonna lower the coil mount on the frame. On the front here, this is a relatively simple operation because when I built these mounts, I made them adjustable. So all we have to do is unbolt this and lower it one bolt hole and it'll actually be a one inch lower and raise the vehicle one inch more. So if you buy a set of Perry Parts bump stops for your vehicle, you won't have to do this. But my previous bump stops are set for a 5 16 coarse thread bolt into a captive nut into the bump stop tower here. And the Perry Parts uses a larger bolt, a 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna have to cut this off and replace it but you shouldn't have to do that with yours. Also, my passenger side coil tower here is a little bit bent, probably from uh, impacting a hard bump stop too hard, if you will. So I'm gonna have to cut this apart and try to straighten it and see if I can reinforce it at the same time. I went ahead and decided to make a new top plate for this coil mount since I already had the CAD files from when I made them initially. So cutting out a new set wasn't a big deal. And to keep the new top plate from bending, I went ahead and made some gussets for both sides. On the right we've got the Perry Parts bump stop, on the left is the old hard polyurethane. The Perry Parts is about the same size, but as I said before, it's hollow on the inside, and these vent holes here on the top actually vent air from the inside foam printed structure for a softer dampening feel. Now that we have the right thread pitch, we can just screw the new bump stops in. The upper mounts for the shocks required a little bit of clearancing for the larger eyes, but after that, everything bolts right in and we should be ready to go. So once you lift a vehicle or build a vehicle with enough suspension travel, you need to make sure you have enough travel in your brake lines. I'm just using doubled up stock brake lines, which is a pretty common thing to do. When you double up brake lines, they can be pretty long, as you can see here, and you don't want these flopping around on the trail or getting caught on the tire. So what I like to do is I like to zip tie them to the shock body. So as the shock body goes up and down, you can take up the slack on this side and then leave some slack here for the wheel turning left and right. So to zip tie them, all I do is take a couple longer zip ties, put them around these fittings, which I don't want to move around or bang against the shock body itself, like this, and then take a couple of shorter zip ties and kind of pinch these in between like that. And then just tighten all four zip ties, and orient them the way you want, and there you go. That'll ride forever, basically. So just trim them off. And there you go. Now you have a uh, brake line that can go up and down with the suspension and uh, can go left and right with the turning of the wheels, left and right. All right, so we got the Perry Parts bump stop swapped into the front, and now we're switching over to the rear. The front coil mounts I made, and I made them adjustable, so they were comparatively simple to what we're gonna have to do on the rear. The rear coil mounts are from the actual 1999 Chevy Tracker. They're still factory in the factory locations. So I'm gonna have to cut these off and weld them an inch lower to get the inch we need. The plasma cutter made really quick work of removing the coil mounts from the frame. Then I used a seven inch grinder to clean up the Modified the bump stop mounts just like I did the front. And then welded them back in an inch lower than they were before. I even found a use for the old bump stops. After getting all the panels and everything reinstalled, we're finally ready to go to Moab. All right, so we're here in sunny, beautiful Moab, Utah, and we are testing the Perry Parts bump stops today. So we've been crawling around on a few trails this week with the bump stops at slow speeds, and I can't really describe how much of a difference it makes because it's that drastic. So just crawling around on slow trails, you don't even really feel the bump stops hit. Um, I've run the GoPro a few times and I know they're touching, but unlike the previous bump stops that were really just a stop, they're that hard, these ones are absorbing more of the impact. So we're here at the High Speed Mesa on the Poison Spider Trail, and we're going to give them a test at higher speeds to see how much of a difference, and really I'm trying to show you how much of a difference they make. So let's do it. All right, here we go on the High Speed Mesa.
lot of mountain and very, very harsh. With these new bump stops and prairie parts though, quite a bit softer. Every one of these whoops gets soaked up and even when they bottom out. It's not harsh, doesn't hurt my back. section. So yeah, I can tell that the bump stops are heavy. Once again, it's not harsh, jarring, not damaging the suspension. What a difference. There we go, that's the end of the high-speed Mesa on Poison Spider. Moab is big, and that's hard to describe to somebody who's never been there, especially if you're from, you know, the Midwest or the eastern part of the country. And if you've never been there, it may be hard to describe and understand how important it is to be able to cover ground quickly, because it's so big. A lot of the roads around Moab are rocky, really rocky. So this is Gemini Bridges Road, and as you can see, it's got a lot of loose rock, it's got a lot of embedded rock, and it's bumpy. And you don't want to be stuck going 2 miles an hour on a road like this. You want to be able to move at a reasonable pace, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour, just so you can get to and from. The ability to cover ground quickly is one of those things, like I said, I underestimated it for several years while going to Moab, but I kind of understand it now just because you get tired of being beat up, especially on these back roads that it takes to get to and from the trails. Another thing Moab has an ample supply of is sand, and so you can see there's sandy washes like this that are really common on trails just getting from one rocky section to the next, and these are a ton of fun to go fast on. Beyond these sandy washes, there's also dunes. I'll be the first person to admit that I don't really have enough horsepower to do the dunes justice, so I can't really get air on the top of this big dune. As you can see here, it just kind of sputters out. But I did capture this shot with the GoPro, and there's no denying the Perry Parts bump stops work. I mean, look at this. I played in the dunes with the old bump stops, and just like on the High Speed Mesa, every time it would hit, it's really harsh and jarring. These make all the difference. Let's do a quick inspection of the bump stops to see how they fared after a full week in Moab. You can see on the spring retention plate where it's definitely been hitting, but the bump stop itself looks basically new aside from being dirty. That was a front bump stop. Let's look at one of the rears. As you can see here, a spring plate, it's definitely been hitting. But the bump stop itself really doesn't show any wear, so all I can assume is that these are going to last a long, long time. If you check out Perry Parts' YouTube channel, you can see where they've tested these over 100,000 cycles. So if you're in the market to upgrade your suspension, specifically to gain more speed over rough terrain, check out Perry Parts. They may offer a 3D printed bump stop for you. If not, send them an email. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.